Hello, and welcome to the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. I'm your host, Benjamin Douglas, and this is the show where each week I read a chapter from a different indie author. Thanks for joining me for today's reading. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining me today for episode number 16 of the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. As always, I'm your host, Benjamin Douglas, and today I'll be reading from and featuring thriller indie author Alan Peterson. Very exciting. It's our first thriller reading on the show. I am on vacation (laughs) this week. And I planned to record this before I left, Um, but because of my book launch and taking care of baby and all the little things that went into both of those, it just didn't happen. So I am recording this episode on location. (laughs) It sounds much more glamorous than it is. I'm actually um, holed up in a bedroom (laughs) in my parents-in-law's house. speaking quietly but firmly so as not to wake my nine-month-old son who's sleeping in the room next door. (laughs) But um, I performed and recorded the reading a little earlier today. I think the reading is going to sound fine. I do have a slightly smaller audio setup than usual since I'm on the road. So if you're an audiophile and the quality difference today bothers you, I do apologize for that. This is not a permanent change. It's just for this week. Very briefly, a couple of announcements. The first is that the anthology in which I've had my sci-fi prequel short story totaled included, that anthology is The Officer, has been released. It came out um, on a number of platforms yesterday, on well, the day before yesterday, rather, on June 28th, and it's doing pretty well. That short story totaled is perma-free if you want to check it out on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Smashwords Direct. I linked to it in the show notes last week. But for 99 cents, you can get this sci-fi anthology, and you'll get my story, and you'll get uh, 10 other stories by other authors. So, um, pretty good deal. And then, uh, just yesterday, June 29th, which is actually today as I'm recording this, Uh, I released my debut title, The Lunar Gambit, which is book one in the Starship Fairfax science fiction, military science fiction series. Um, You know, the book ended up being a little shorter than I intended, which is funny. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago with one of my prequel stories, too. I think I just write short, guys, and I don't know necessarily that that's a bad thing because I look back over my draft and my edits, and it's not like, it doesn't really feel like it's missing a lot. It's just really that tightly knit. It's, I mean, it's action adventure, and you know, I'm not pretending it's something it isn't. It's pulp fiction, it's genre fiction. It's action adventure, military sci-fi. This is not intended to be high art literary fiction. but, you know, it's it's a fun story. I think some of the characters are relatable, enjoyable, likable. They're banter, they're rapport. Um, there's a solid three-act structure. But it didn't get up to where I wanted it, which was 40,000 words, so that I could, in good conscience, call it a novel, as according to the Science Fiction Fantasy Writers of America standard of 40,000 words as a novel. I did break over 30, So it's a nice, fat novelette, if I wanted to call it that, but I'd rather just avoid that whole discussion, since in my mind it's really structured and meant to function as a novel, so I'm just calling it a book or a title. (laughs) And, you know, I'm going to try to make the the next books in the series longer, but I can't promise that will happen, because I don't want to just add padding. You know, I I just I want to tell the story that I have to tell. Um, And in the meantime, it's 99 cents all week. And when I bump it up to full price in a week, that full price is $2.99. I do not feel bad for an instant about pricing over 30,000 words at $2.99. Man, that's a dollar for over 10,000 words. (laughs) And and if I do say so myself, they're fairly well written 
for the genre and the genre expectations. Uh, so check that out. That's the Lunar Gambit. It, uh, I linked to it again on last week's show notes. It's on Amazon and it's in Kindle Unlimited as well. All right, back to Mr. Alan Peterson. I'm going to begin, as I always do, by reading his Amazon author bio. And before I do, because he has a link here, I just want to mention Mr. Peterson's last name is all E's. Every vowel, all three vowels are E. Join my mailing list and get exclusive bonus features created just for subscribers http colon slash slash alanpeterson.com slash mailing list. Alan Peterson writes high octane thrillers. He was born in Costa Rica and raised there and in Venezuela. He moved to Minnesota to attend college and married his college sweetheart. They now live in San Francisco with three small dogs on a quintessential steep city street. That's a 17% grade. You can learn more about Alan and his books on his website, www.alanpeterson.com. I'm grinning as I read this, Alan, because I'm imagining you living on a 17% grade with three small dogs. <laughs> they just they just roll down the hill when you take them out for a walk. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I got to keep an eye on those dogs. Oh, great. So Alan um was born in Costa Rica and raised there and in Venezuela, which means uh that Alan probably actually pronounces all of these lovely place names very very naturally, and I am a little embarrassed to say as someone who is bilingual and has studied multiple languages, that um, none of the languages I know are uh, Latin American in any variety. So uh, I apologize, Alan, <laughs> if my pronunciation of some of the place names in this reading are a little goofy, but um, I think you'll get the gist, and at least I try to be consistent. The title from which I'm reading today is called She's Gone, a Pete Maddox thriller, book two. And Alan has told me that book three uh, is with the editor, so that will be out in the near future. Have a look at his website for updates, www.alanpeterson.com, or check out his Amazon author page. I'll have links to both of those, as always, in the show notes. All right, so Alan is a thriller writer. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I've not read a great deal of thrillers. Um, I've read some like sort of, I guess you would call Stephen King like maybe literary horror. Um, not sure about that. And some of the science fiction, some of like the Michael Crichton I used to read can be a little like tech thriller. But uh, I haven't really kept up with the thriller genre. One of my favorite indie personalities, though, as I'm sure she is for many of us, Miss Joanna Penn, is a thriller author. And um, Alan Peterson, today's author, he hosts the Meet the Thriller podcast, which I noticed uh, uh, hosted um, Joanna fairly recently, as well as Russell Blake. So, um, some big fish coming to be interviewed on Meet the Thriller Author, which is the show run by, hosted by today's author, Alan Peterson. So check that out as well, and I'll leave a link to that podcast also in today's show notes. Uh, today's reading is fairly short. It's one chapter. Alan's writing is also pretty tight-knit, pretty fast-paced. You're just going to get a taste today. So we're going to move right on to that. Thanks again for being here. Do come back next week. The show just keeps on rolling. Appreciate any ratings and reviews on iTunes. And without any further ado, one last reminder, as always, this reading does not come from an official audiobook, and it is performed and recorded and produced here with the author's knowledge and consent and permission. <laughs> uh, here is my reading of chapter one from Alan Peterson's She's Gone. She's gone. 
A Pete Maddox Thriller, Book Two, by Alan Peterson. Part One, Honduras. Chapter One, Thirty Days. Maddox Residence, Key Biscayne, Florida, August 1st. 2011. Nothing good can come from a telephone call in the middle of the night, Pete Maddox thought as he struggled with the bedside lamp. His wife, Sonia, sat up, disquieted on her side of the bed, her hands fluttering in the dark toward the blue screen of the shrieking iPhone. The ringtone sounded like a jackhammer breaking pavement in the middle of the bedroom. She grabbed it on the fourth ring. Hello? Sonia's voice was groggy and infused with an equal mixture of concern and annoyance. The voice on the other line blurted out, She's gone! Mom? she asked, and tried to clear the sleep from her throat. I'm sorry for calling so early, sweetheart. I forget about the time difference, but she's gone and we don't know what to do. The worry in her mother's voice felt like a splash of cold water to the face. Sonia peppered her mother with questions. Who, Mom? Who's gone? What's going on? Are you all right? Where are you? The darkened room was suddenly awash in a bright light. Maddox had found the light switch. Sonia reeled away, covering her eyes as if the sudden burst of light would burn up her corneas. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. It's Felicidad's granddaughter, Alma. She's gone missing, Mom said. Alma? Sonia flung her legs around so she was sitting on the edge of the bed, her bare feet dangling over the cool hardwood floor of the master bedroom. Maddox had jumped out of bed and made his way around to Sonia's side. He looked at her with worry, arms crossed. She shrugged at him. Her eyebrows arced in concern, and her eyes blinked rapidly as she tried to focus. Is she dead? Sonia asked. Oh, sweet mother of God, I hope not, but, but we don't know. She's just gone. Sonia's mother replied. Gone? Gone where? Details, Mom, Sonia said. She left for a job in Mexico or the United States, and no one's heard from her since then, she said. Hold on, Mom. Let me put you on speaker with Pete. Sonia fidgeted with her iPhone for a couple seconds. Mom, can you hear me? Sonia and Maddox hovered over the phone as her mom confirmed the speakerphone was working just fine. Hola, Doña Luz. What exactly happened? Maddox asked. He was calm and collected. Panic sinks a drowning man, he thought. Felicidad called me in tears. She said Alma told her that she had found work in the United States. Felicidad was against it. Too dangerous, she told her. But Alma didn't listen. She took off against her grandmother's wishes with her friend Yvette and a man who promised them well-paying jobs. And now Felicidad hasn't heard from Alma in over a month. And she would never go that long without calling to let her know she was okay. She's just disappeared. 
and Felicidad is worried sick, and the police won't help. She's in Honduras, right? Maddox asked. Yes, Alma lives with Felicidad in Choluteca, Honduras, she replied. What about her friend Yvette? Has her family heard from her? Maddox asked. No, both girls are just gone, Luz said as her voice trembled. Not good, Maddox thought. Okay, Doña Luz, let me see what I can find out and we'll go from there. But for now, I want you to try to get some sleep. We'll call you back in the afternoon after I make some calls. Maddox's voice was firm and reassuring, and that soothed her nerves. What do you think? Sonia asked, knowing that Maddox wouldn't know much more than she, but still wanting his reassurance that everything was going to be fine. Thirty days without contact. That's not good. But we just don't know yet. So let's wait and see. I need to make some calls. It wasn't the reassurance she'd hoped for. This concludes another episode of the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. Thanks for joining me, your host, Benjamin Douglas, for another indie author reading. If you liked what you heard, be sure to visit http colon slash slash thebookspeakspodcast.wordpress.com for more episodes and for links to the author's website and the author's Amazon author page in the show notes. If you'd like to follow me on my own author journey, you can find me at http colon slash slash Benjamin Douglas Books dot wordpress dot com and of course if you're an indie author interested in having your work featured on the show or if you're interested in discussing having your book read and produced by me as an audiobook feel free to contact me at benjamin douglas books at gmail dot com thanks for joining me today i hope you have a productive and enjoyable weekend <laughs>